Okay, we're starting our assessors meeting at 520 on December 21st and present so far we have Roxanne Parent, our clerk Laura Lucier, Lee Whitcomb and Russ French is expected momentarily. But we're going to go ahead with um, reading our minutes and processing them. Alan, there's the door. Yay. There we go. Welcome back. Long time no, how have you been? <laughs> Long time no see, Mr. French. That's right. We we'll saw you a quarter of four. <laughs> So we're just looking at the minutes. Mm -hmm. This is how they this is how they are on the website. So basically when I go in to do the minutes for this meeting, I'm going to check on the button and these will automatically finalize. Mm -hmm. If we have a motion to approval. So automatically finalize. So we already opened the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, just like two minutes ago, though, so you're here. Where's the, where's the owl? The owl needs to, the select board has a meeting starting, and so they I, have didn't dips. Want, I didn't want to take the chance on us still being here when they needed, so. Well, we're going to move along tonight anyway. It doesn't, my laptop's hitting off for you. Yeah, look at that, that's good. So you're all there. Sure. So is that recording? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what we out there in the world. <laughs> this is how we did it before she bought the owl. Oh, it wasn't working. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. okay we still, we still have, we, well, have we a motion to accept the minutes as read? Okay. Agreed. Agreed. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, which one do we sign? Yeah, just, yep. Yeah, go ahead and sign that one. Send it around. Yeah, just sign. Yeah. Just initially. It, it doesn't matter. Approval format. Well, that that is how it comes out of the new website now. I create the agendas. I want to say I create the, the agendas in directly in the town website, mm. and we work the minutes off of that, and that's how it is. And how they look now. I would like to ask: Is why are the minutes that being posted that aren't the ones we agree upon? Because I looked at some of the minutes and we changed a few things and that, that's not the ones that are posted. From how long? I haven't posted actual minutes in, except for these in a long time. Like, if you can print, find examples, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I will. I have them right here. Oh, okay. Probably because you hand wrote the changes on all of them except the copy that was given to me to put. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> well, that, that could I be true, so. but those are the ones we signed with the handwritten. Yeah, but. And, okay, and those are the ones that are in the book, which is the official. But website. you're posting the, the ones that aren't, aren't agreed upon. On the well, then you can fix it if you show us which the where, where they are. I would gladly go on and fix it. I just know that I haven't posted any for the website in a very long time. Right. Well, these are August 17th. That's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That was pretty well signed. I'm just saying <laughs> okay, that they're well, not the ones we signed. Okay. Well, I looked at, sure I looked at all of them. And I said, I'd be happy to if you could just give me copies of what the fixes were. I'll go back in and paste them. And so we, crossed this, like it's, we crossed this out. You know. I'm just saying. I, I know. The, I when know. we signed. Yeah, we're signing a certain right. a certain document. And the, and the document, I don't even know how they got onto the website because the document you signed is in the official posting yes. location. Yes. The website is not the official posting location. Right. But these are prior to these are prior to the website, I think. Right. So and the books yep. are always the official posting. If you can make her information and possible. yep, that'll be that's why I said that's if terrific. I can get copies of those, I will be yep. happy to make sure they're well they should be in the book on the website. They should be in the book. Yep. Now, next we have invoices. So we I can have, make copies of those just in case. Oh, you can. It would make it a heck of a lot easier. We have one invoice from uh, CoreLogic, which is the company that supplies us with our Marshall and Swift manuals. It is the annual renewal for $674.20. And, I'm sorry. Um, what was that? I said, this is this is for CoreLogic, which is the company that supplies us with the Marshall and Swift manuals, cost valuation manuals, the big books. <laughs> and this is the annual renewal of our subscription for six hundred seventy-four dollars and twenty cents. And uh, my recommendation is that we do renew for another year. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to renew. Okay. I agree. Second. Okay. Second. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Thank you. Approve to pay. Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 Thank you. We'll initial that. Let's see. Mail. Oh, we had one. Mm -hmm. Most excellent piece of email today from the Commissioner of Local Services, dear Roxanne Parent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this certificate acknowledges your successful completion of DLS's course, online course 101, Introduction to Assessment Administration Law about Procedures and Valuations. Finished it up today. Well, I finished the whole course. Yes. No, the whole course. Yes, that's what it says here. The whole, oh, the whole course? All 10 modules, yes. Oh, because it doesn't even show up on mine saying I finished it. Did yes. You see whole thing? Yes. Yep. Yep. I've had a problem with it not working with my iPad. Oh. It was nice enough to tell us 54 times. Yeah, <laughs> they were having some kind of a glitch in the room. It came in 54 times. Who did? <laughs> this did. notice. It was so funny. Oh, uh, oh, so it wasn't uh, just me because no, I don't think so. But but here we are, and very happy I, I to see it. Struggled very hard to get yeah. them to work and to uh, acknowledge it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's work. It's been acknowledged. Congratulations. Oh, good. Thank you. And uh, delighted to have that. This file. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That'll go in your personal file. But and... I didn't get an acknowledge of it, and they're saying they're. Oh, okay. Well, I can forward it to me. you. <laughs> I can forward it to you, certainly. Okay, that was all we had in the mail. There are no new listings. There are no new sales. We had one. Oh, it's a, simply a transfer within family, um, creating a, a trust and then putting the real estate into the trust. And that's the only one that was, you know, what, a $1 within the family transfer. Mm -hmm. That's the only one now. Who was that? Let me see the... Oh. Yep. And our permits are mostly um, oh, minor electrical work or gas work. Mm -hmm. And a, yeah, a solar. Do we, do we want to initial this? If you'd like, sure. Yep. Yep. Which one is it? Yeah. Well, the ground's not, ground's not frozen. Right. Not yet, but. Ground's not frozen yet. 
Oh, to the new pool. Yeah. So, well, they put the, the shell in, the shell of the pool has gone in. Um, or at least there was a permit for it. It's a heated pool, though. So. I know, but we'll get out there to see it. If it's heated, then it's not the wrong time of year. Sure. <laughs> Luxurious. No, oh, fun. when I was at the conference in Stowe last year, it was the beginning, it was the first week of February. And their pool, Heated pool is open year round. Mm -hmm. And you enter from the inside, and they've got like heavy plastic flaps. Yes. And you can either go through or swim underwater under them to go to the outer part of the pool. So no, the pool is surrounded by snow, but steam hot. Huh. Oh, that must and be quite a treat. Quite a treat. How bad? Outdoors in February in upstate Vermont. Nice. Oh, hot tub. Yes. No. Don't have any. None tonight. Okay, okay we'll start there. Yeah, so we have no motor vehicle abatements tonight. And let's see, the next item is Roy Bishop. Um, I did send him a copy of NSTAR's application for abatement. And because, of course, he's the one that gives us, calculates the values and gives them to us. And so he said, um, basically, this whole issue, it's a statewide issue, is going to have to wait for litigation. And so uh, I'll check with him to see if we should deny or extend. I expect it's, it's deny, but I don't want to do that without double checking with him first. But at any rate, um, Independent assessments, visits to board members' homes of Roy Bishop. He's available next week. Can I interrupt? And would like to minute? come? Yep. Um, we can't discuss this. Um, I spoke to the Board of Ethics, and it's a conflict of interest because it's, we are voting on it for our homes to be assessed or appraised by an outside. So it would impact us personally, so we cannot vote on it. So don't vote on it. So we can't even do it. We can't discuss it. We can't vote on it because whatever happens, it's an impact on us. So we cannot do that. And in spite of the effort, behind it what's the effort the effort behind it is to have an independent appraisal of the three that to alleviate and, and to accusations right. of falsifying data yeah and have an independent outside appraiser come in and do our three well i guess my so that uh, there can be no it would affect us such as you had brought up Right. And, 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 and yeah, and, yeah. And, and the implications, the implications were and, extremely. And let's, let me just make it clear. My implication was, I guess my implication was, my question is how the property card was, your property card particularly, was being changed without, obviously, you hadn't gone to see it. And it had gone down. So how did that happen? Well, we discussed that. No, well, what did we discuss? That Russ and Malcolm and I if you Russ had asked me questions. No, they hadn't. In in the last couple of years, but they asked me any questions they wanted about the property. I gave them all the answers, and they determined 
what the rate should be or the, the percentage of finish should be. I did not vote on it or give any opinion. I simply answered factual answers to questions. And it went down. Okay. If that's the way you want to go with that, that's fine. So, and you said it's time for um, a site visit. So why is it do we hire someone to do a site visit when the protocol has been, you don't want- This is something new that we're trying to do to alleviate your concerns largely. My concerns wasn't that. I was just reading the property card saying no one's been to your house and how does it go down? And you are carefully picking out our, our, our two, especially not Malcolm so much, uh, for continued questioning. Well, and I'm always reading your property cards. Yeah. So we, uh, you know, the thought came up here at a meeting mm -hmm. to have an outside appraiser do them. And there would be no influence from any of us on the values of our properties. The people of Conway could say, okay, you know, it certainly was fair. I'm just saying that we cannot vote on or decide to do this because it is involving our financial interest. So could, what is your suggestion? Well, that we do like in the past that had always been done where we go and look. But you wouldn't let us in here. That's got nothing to do with the what it sure does. We, we, we'd have to quiet see the we just wait your, this is the board we would have to have a, a view of the interior of your house okay. okay we can do all three interiors that's no problem the point is we can and that's what we've done in the past and we go and then mm -hmm. whoever's house it is we go mm -hmm. so we, that was not brought up just recently to do that the point you brought up because you had been adamant in refusing that was before I was an assassin. No, no, ever since no there have been times since I mean, you have sorry, refused that entry. Did not happen. And my family has been very reluctant because of the accusations that were made. I didn't see where I made an accusation. Because all I was doing was reading what was on the property card. Well, it came the discussions of it in your in your discussion of it. Certain phrases certainly came out as accusations, and that caused some deep offense. I'm sorry, I offended you, but I think changing our whole process as to uh, doing an appraisal is against what we do for everyone else. Everyone else has to abide by that decisions of what assessors do. And that's what we mm -hmm. were voted to do. I was voted as an assessor to do this appraisal. And um, to change that now, I think that's, and you're making the townspeople go by those rules, is doesn't make sense to me. We have the townspeople have to go by what we assess them, right? Yes, but you're saying that we don't. We're also we're as saying we don't. We don't seem to agree with what we've done. I agree right now. Look at listen to me. We can do that. What do you mean? I'm not agreeing. I when before that I didn't agree with your assessment. I still right. don't don't qu question your decision on my assessment, but you voted. And that's the way it is. And in the past, that's the way it is. I followed the procedure. You voted. I stepped away. I let you guys decide and you voted. You assessed it higher than what I was being a build for in 2022. But that was your decision. And I went with that, right? Yes. Okay. So, so that's you... the process that we were all supposed to do. You would allow us to do a full interior inspection of your house. Sure. And the barn. Sure. Okay, because you, you know, well, when we've been there. I'm sure Kate would not let her go. Absolutely not. Why? Because she won't. She told me. She said, you want a divorce? 
So that's so I know I know she will not let you in the house. And it's 50-50. I mean, you know, it's a joint joint house. So mm -hmm. that's where it stands. When we've had properties that we like the N star or whatever, that uh, are beyond our abilities or whatever to appraise, we call in an outside appraiser. When we initially thought about this, having an outside appraiser camp coming in. Well, okay, I'm not going like to good idea. Anymore because, All right. Because, I will possibly talk, talk to the ethics commission also. Yes, and I have a letter from the ethics if you would like to. I'd, I'd love to see it. Yeah. And they said, we cannot discuss discuss this at all. We cannot vote on this. It has to go, talk. we have to go to our town council and then it will have to go to the rules of necessity. Okay, do you have the letter with you? Yes, I will read it. Part of that. Can it we is, make a copy to no, add to the minutes? No, it is my personal um, um, confidential one. Isn't this to you as an assessor? No, because I, it, no, it, it was not, when I called, it is not, I was not, it's not on behalf of the assessor. I was told it can only, she can only tell me what I can do. She cannot tell me what the whole group can do. So. I'm, I'm, I'm not catching that one very well. You a private one that you were an assessor. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, it was a little confusing. You are you are an elected member of the three board of of a set of the three member board of assessors for the town of Conway mm -hmm. to determine assessments. The assessor's office do appraisals of homes. Assessors do appraisal of homes. In the past, when the assessor's homes needed to be assessed. The other two assessors have done the appraisals. Well, she's calling them appraisals, but it's assessment. Mm -hmm. One of the other assessors had a, proposed that instead of the board hiring an appraiser, should hire an appraiser to appraise the homes of the three assessors. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't accurate, but the other assessor wants to hire an appraiser who has Provided service in the assessor's office in the past with regards of issues of other homes. So no, not for the homes, but that's all right. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, didn't quite. Yeah. Because of your obligations under 19 of the conflict of interest of law, you may not participate in the matter regarding appraisal of your own home. As a member mm -hmm. of the board of assessors, you are a municipal employee. For purpose of the conflict of interest law, under 19, you may not participate as a municipal employee in a particular matter if you are an immediate family member or financial interest in the matter. You have the financial interest in selecting the procedure by which your home would be assessed and of an individual with whom you would, who would engage in an assessment. So we cannot do that. We cannot discuss this. We cannot engage in hiring anybody. We would not be doing anything to determine value. This is what the lawyer said. Like, we cannot discuss it because it is conflict of interest on our homes. And we cannot hire anybody to do it. We need to, there's another part in here where it says, your duty in this instance is always to keep in mind the best interests of the town and public. Mm -hmm. The cost of the appraisal would be paid by the assessor's office with the public funds. So as a relevant question, whether it would be whether the plan would be cost effective. Would you tell me who, you, who wrote to you? Which of their? It is Amy Nee, N-E-E. -E. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm interpreting it differently. Mm -hmm. But I will contact them and we will try and get a very clear statement and I'll also check with town council. 
Mm -hmm. So we'll just, shall we table this matter for the moment? Mm -hmm. I move to table it until further information is available. Okay. okay second. second. Okay. Favor? Okay. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, I'll let Roy know as soon as possible. Okay. Let me see. Before we get into abatements, uh, we did get a couple of things. Budget season is coming up. We will be having our budget hearing in uh, January 23rd. I believe with the first group. Nope, sorry, it's gonna be February 21st. February 21st. And what's that? What's a budget that? hearing. We prepare a requested budget for next year. Mm -hmm. And then we go and meet with the committee and the finance committee mm -hmm. and talk about each line and so forth and uh, explain our increases, the amounts, decreases. any increases or re decreases, right? Any ad new added fields, anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be starting to work on that. They also sent out the capital project request form uh, for new projects, uh, not necessarily new equipment, but new projects. And I couldn't think of any projects we have unless it's going to be changing the, the system. But that's gonna be ARPA. But that's gonna be ARPA. So that wouldn't come under this anyway. So nothing to do with the mapping and that kind of stuff. No, yeah, just the, the overlays. No, no, there's a, a a good one thing I'd like to do very much is to find someone in town who would take on the GIS system and, and the site as a project of its own. Uh, I'm not able to put the time in that I should with it. It's great. It's valuable now, and it has the potential to be much more so. And it needs someone who has more time to put into it and um, hopefully some, some uh, GIS knowledge to help develop a lot of the ideas that have been brought forward. That would be a project. Um, It would probably require a stipend, at least, for the person. Someone like Walter Goodrich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are several people. The there are several people that I know immediately who would probably have the, the education and the uh, hands-on knowledge with the program mm -hmm. and could work well with our, our programmers. Um, it would still pull all its information from the evaluation program. So, What do you think of that possible idea of separating that out from us a little bit? Um, ask me questions. <laughs> That's... Well, I think it would be a good idea. I mean, well, there's <laughs> many more things that can be learned from it yes. other than just assessing stuff. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And we need to build some layers, you know, board of health layers. Right. Them with Carl's information, the data on the placement of septics and wells, mm -hmm. you know, those are critical pieces mm -hmm. of information for the town. And um, we have some good layers. There are a great deal more that can be done. Yep. Yep. Well, it would be interesting to find out what it would cost, you know, what mm -hmm. um, to find out. You know, yeah. Yeah, we have, um, yeah, that's the thing. So how does that relate to? Well, I call that a new project. I call that a new project, mm -hmm. and they're asking for a description of the project and what the amount would be. Right. And so my first question is: Do you feel that this is worth following forward as a project to see what could be done with it? It's worth. Yeah, it's worth. I think it's worth checking out. I mean, do you think we could get the Board of Health. I mean, I, we got to come up with funds for it somewhere. Yes. I mean, not not in our budget. 
I'm I'm saying start a new little mini department. Yeah, this is the capital. This would come out of the capital, capital improvements. Okay. Yeah. Capital yeah. Improvements. Right. So it wouldn't have to come out of the space. No, and some of our GIS money might be able to go to it. The GIS money that covers my time. It's not much, but. Uh, and and actually, the cost of the ongoing, um, you know, the annual program costs that would come out of the new budget, they'd be shifted over. Yes. So, um, well, why don't I contact some other towns and see? Who they have, Amherst, I know, has a very, very good department. Now, they're a much bigger town than we are. And find out how many hours that person's working, what they're being paid, that type of thing. Well, Amherst pays very high. I know they do. And wait, is there any other small local towns that you know? There are. No, there are, and I'll, I'll find them. Ryan Cleary can help me with that. Up at the, uh, yeah. So, what do you do with say yes? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, it's asking, you know, the purpose of the expenditure, equipment trade in, uh, expected use of requested item, all this. I'd say we're not there yet. Okay. But I'll try and have more information for our next meeting mm -hmm. and preliminary figures on the budget. Shouldn't be too many changes there as far as the budget's concerned. Um, we are putting in for a replacement computer because ours is getting old and with greater capacity. That's out of your IT budget. Though. But that's gonna be out of the IT budget, yeah. Yeah, because we're behind on the tight, on the replacement schedule now, I believe. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. mine was Jenny's. Yeah. They're way behind. Right, so, um, all right, let's see. Abatement applications, let's go with that. Today, all of you folks out there in TV land. <laughs> we did a great deal of, um, certainly the, the largest work of our site visits for application abatements, and also managed to catch up with a new growth with a new resident. And that was very nice to meet him and go through the whole inside, outside, get new photos and find out about his plans for the property. So that was terrific. A nice bonus to the day. Um, we could take them one by one here. We started out at Bill Graves' house. Uh, his application is based on the list of personal property that we have had in the past and carried forward. And he did sell his wood processing equipment, all of his wood processing equipment in May of this year of 2022. So I explained to him that because he did own it on January 1, we have to leave it in place for this year's bill, but it will be taken off his account for next year. And he understood and was agreeable to that. So. We well, have to deny his application. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yes. Yes. I, I motion. I make a motion that we deny. Bill Graves application. Okay. For 2022. Right? Uh, three. Three. Okay. But that will automatically be taken off. Right. It will disappear from his account, from his 2024 account. Yep. I um, second it. Okay. Any questions, discussion? Okay. Eyes? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Three granted. All right, we'll fill the assessed value in later. We're taking off, uh, there'll be nothing there. And okay. And then we stopped at Bob and Carla Carlo's house. 
And of course, Carla was in last week to discuss her bricked area along the side of the house. Uh, we did look at the exterior because she had also mentioned that the siding has a lot of um, dings and so forth in it. And we found, oh, well, it was 12 or 15 places where the siding has been broken. Um, there was one beside the garage door that was pretty, pretty good piece out of the, out of the uh, corner trim. And let's see, there we go. Yeah, the siding on the house is terrible, more than 50 years old, chips and cracks all over. Open porch is not measured out correctly. It's 18 by 16. Uh, the barn is over 30 years old and the roof is leaking and the metal is not up to par. It's rusty and the screw seals are losing their, their goodness. There's their seal. The terrace, it's a walkway to the back open porch. The walkway is only used for walking on and the bathroom is typical for a 50 year old house. The kitchen had a permit for a kitchen renovation a few years ago, uh, but bathrooms were not mentioned. That's adding that. So I wrote down some things while we were there. And this afternoon, the, the porch floor, the ends of the boards are getting kind of punky and rotting, and the threshold was not good into the house. Uh, 12 or minus plus or minus dings. Some good sized ones in the vinyl siding. Um, we looked at the exterior of the barn. The exterior of itself by itself looked all right, but it is water is leaking in around the plastic panels in the roof, especially that were put in to allow light in. I remeasured the sheds on the back of the barn, and we remeasured the brick area and the open porch and. Uh, the little wood deck there out the back door. Our measurements, uh, they measured it at 18 by 16. We came out 17 and a half by 16 and a half on the porch. So we're not that far apart. And she said that roof leaks also. The walkway comes in at a four foot width. And then just about the time it gets to the step, because of the setback and all, it is uh, broadened out to seven by 12. And that's what we found. We had called the seven by 12 area a patio uh, simply because that's the name for any outdoor seating area. And that's one of the arguments. So we have several questions here siding on the house we we were I asked if we might view the interior of the house and Colorado said no or the barn uh, neither one uh, I think she did indicate that Bob had it locked and she didn't know where the key was and that it made it sound like maybe we could ask Bob if we could see the interior of the barn another time but not today um Your thoughts? So we have, we've corrected the dimension. Yes, I haven't done them yet on the, on the program, but one of the biggest, correcting the dimensions is good. We also need to correct uh, or see if we need to adjust what we're calling the exterior condition of the house. We currently have it. It looks like good. Should that be adjusted? And that is just the house. This is the exterior of the house. Where we got the right. This is not the garage. The garage. Um, one story barn, 24 by 32. Grade C, can you, we have an average. So. The siding all looked pretty good. I didn't see any problems with that. On the barn? Yeah. Right. 
the next consideration would be the fair to average category on that. What will it cost to repair? Can, can that type of roof be repaired? Or is it gonna have to be replaced? Looking at it, I would say it needs replacement. That's what I was thinking too. Well, Especially if the, if the rubber seals are no, giving. I mean, that, that, that isn't a standing seam move. No, it's a, no, it's no corrugated. Standing. Yeah, yeah. Well, perhaps then we should go, to, go from uh, average down to it, fair to average for the condition of the barn because of the roof. Well, no, not, not specifically, we can't. But we can say that overall, the barn is a fair to average instead of an average. I guess we can go with that. Yeah. That seems appropriate to me. Okay. So meeting. Barn. Average to fair average. Okay, because of roof. Are the siding of the house did that? Are we looking at just the siding or are we looking at the floors and the, you know? Um, I have a conundrum in my head because we say quite clearly on our application for abatement informational page that if entry is refused, the abatement will be denied. Can we separate the exterior of the house from the interior and simply make some sort of determination on the exterior alone? I guess I don't know. I mean, what's if, I, if the paperwork says what it says, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as far as the brickwork is concerned, that we can do some look at and consider. And we, well, we do want to, we did want to correct. We did want to correct the dimensions of the porch. If we were wrong, we're, we're not, we're, it's kind of half a foot there, half a, you know. Can I, can I just say something? Um, it can't be wrong. If you look at their drawing, that's all I want to say. <laughs> yeah, because we had it continuing all the way over to where it's, it's open. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But, uh, you know, we did want to correct that. Does that mean we can correct the exterior condition of the house too? Even though we were refused entry to the interior. I don't know. I mean, if it says I'm a, is that something that we wrote up or is that something? It's that from, from the law. I'm going to, I think I'm going to, what I mean, I think I'm going to find the actual wording first before we do that. Then I move to table it. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to have the actual wording. I just have a question. So, okay. Um, I understand what you're doing. For the record, uh, Mrs. Harlow is, is um, Roxanne's sister. Yes, I'm not making any judgment calls. I just have a question for as to as how that's going. Um, but about correcting, I, I understand you're not sure because the, the, the abatement says if you don't let people in, you can't get an abatement. But, the, um, but about correcting errors on the property card. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with that? We correct them and recalculate. 
And if there's an abatement due, then they get an abatement. Well, you're just saying that you don't get an abatement if they're not allowed in the house. Well, that's what we're trying to decide, determine. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, these I, are I, would say, I would say that until we get it checked out, we don't yep. do anything. Yep. We don't okay. change. We know the dimensions are different. We have that yep. report. Right. Um, but if it's if that's the law, then I guess you have to go with what the law is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We did have an unusual did question. You, did you vote? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yes, you moved to table. Moved you moved to table. To table. I second. You Aye. and I? Aye. Okay. That is tabled until we have further information. The uh, Joe Stragowski brought up a question from a couple of years ago, his evaluation back then. And I think it calls, falls into the 8 of 58 section which is uh, basically a clerical error. Let's see. For 1921, uh, 2021, 1920, for 20, fiscal 21 and 22, he was overbilled for his back land that is in chapter 61B. It was billed out, valued out at the full value uh, rather than at the 25% of that full value. And so it was billed out at 20,467 and 20,759 instead of being 5,100 plus change. So I have the information here on how to apply application for an 8 of 58 approval. And I'd like to move forward with that. Did he have to apply? Or did he have to send an abatement? He, no. So he's he's pointing out, fire, fire, yes, fire. that it got found later. So, what's the difference between a clerical error and errors on property cards? Oh, errors on property cards might be for mismeasuring or right. so descriptive it, error. I got, yes, errors. Yeah. So, what's the difference between that error and finding? property card errors that were done by mistake. Well, I suppose this could have been the same thing. I don't know. Joe said that you had told him a year ago and he pushed this mm -hmm. that it was an error in the camera software miscalculating. Oh conversion. Yes. That's right. It but was. what about any errors on property evaluations because of the of the program. Well, I, I've tried to look at them, look them all over now, and I think I've pretty well seen all of them now to make sure there weren't any others. I think we had one or two abatements last year based on the conversion. Yep. So I'd like to go forward, as I say, with the 8 of 58 application and keep you posted as how that process goes. Mm -hmm. Nothing is voted or granted on this at all tonight. Okay. Um, let's see. After Harlow's, we went over to okay, these are two uh, sorry, these are two abatements at the request of the uh, tax collector. One is on the Allen properties out in um, Poland. And they had sold bill uh, land to on uh, the this spring in in 2022 and i had made a holding account for that that was supposed to be inactive but uh where you could choose either tax or taxable or exempt or blank i had chosen blank hoping it would be inactive and that wasn't the case so it generated a bill so we need to abate that extra bill in full and abate the original bill on his house and we will rebill it with that land back in. Got that? No, say that again. Okay. Abate and reissue. Yeah, his house, his property where his house is, we will abate it in full okay. and then issue a new bill with the, that land, those acres back in. Okay. Added, added back in. Okay. 
Very good. Um, we'll get that process to be signed next time. And uh, another one was Bent Nail Drive, where they had a number of property transfers and uh, we need to Me too. Okay, we need to abate bills to 429 and 430 in full and rebuild them at the same amounts to the new owning party. That's all, it's a change of name. Oh, so they got billed to the wrong people. Yeah, oh. yeah, to the seller. So do we need to vote on them? I don't think so. Well, yes, sure, let's vote on them. Um, I move to correct the Allen bills to remove the extra bill number 13 for land that was separated off in calendar 22, not in 21, and to abate and reissue bill number 11, adding back in the full acreage. Okay. Second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. And the Campbells, this is bills number 429 and 430. They were billed to Scott Gagnon. This year, they should be abated in full and rebuilt to Tang and Jared Campbell. So moved. Second. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. And you do the up, I was gonna say any discussion, no eyes, would, have we another eye? Aye. Aye, okay, <laughs> great, thank you. Yep, then we went to C, that's NSTAR. Told you I sent that one off to Roy. Catherine Sloss's land on Husick Road. And her concern is, the only reason I purchased this lot was to preserve it in its natural state. I have no intention to develop it. This is a third of a lot that was subdivided into three lots by the prior owner. Uh, the assessment issued by the Board of Assessors for the larger lot before the subdivision was 86,200. Also, my lot has the least amount of buildable area of the other two subdivided lots because it is mostly wetlands. This lot will not be improved and requires no town services. Of course, if it is improved in the future, the assessment should change. Oh. I respectfully submit that it has been overvalued and assessed and it should be greatly reduced. Thank you for your consideration. Catherine Sloss. So we went over and got out and walked out on the property because it does have a frontage plateau that then slopes down to another plateau that eventually slopes down to the brook. And so I printed out a topographic map showing where this is. And here's where the new house is. And we walked in here. Here where it drops down to and becomes wetlands at the brook, it's 140 feet from the road. Mm -hmm. So considering that we have to have a 50 foot setback, that would put it back around here, about where we were thinking, where it drops off. But. The area not to build a house. This, it certainly would seem to be so. Yeah. Um, it is 1.275 acres. Yep. And so, yeah, I can agree that, you know, perhaps a half acre there is wetland because this is the state wetlands map also. Mm -hmm. There's another layer on it. Yeah. Um, if she wanted to make it into conservation land, For a certain period of time. Is there a for that? I don't believe so. We'll check that out. That would take away the buildability of it. She could do, put much, it in. How much land does she have on the other side of the room? Um, about four acres, I think. So if you added those two together. Maybe she'd have enough to do that, but I don't know what she wants to do with the other. Um. I 
I, I, I will explain to her that having that Intel large parcel that was formally valued at 86.2 divided into three doesn't mean you divide the 86.2 by three, you know, because you're creating two new building lots. The We can certainly send her the land schedule and explain that. Um, but we looked pretty carefully at the slope and at the where the brook is located. And uh, now the flood area. I think that my thought would be to deny the application as is, but explain the land schedule to her and perhaps tell her options as far as putting in to do a, a private conservation restriction. She could do it for a period of time, 10 years or five years or whatever, and then renew it for her lifetime, perhaps. And what does the conservation mean? Conservation means that you have agreed that that land will not be developed. Some people do it in perpetuity. That's what the Franklin Land Trust is mm -hmm. advocates, of course. Yeah. Um, but it does not have to be in perpetuity. It can be for shorter periods of time. And that can work better in someone's estate planning, things like that. Mm -hmm. Right now, someone might say, I absolutely want that piece there to be in conservation restriction for all my life then perhaps there are children inherited and that doesn't work well, or perhaps there's not enough in the estate and they need the value of, that, you know, things like that. There's no option there to bring it back out of conservation ever. Oh, yeah. Whereas if you do it for a finite period of years. So you can limit it. I can. I thought there was a Minimum of, yeah, yeah. Believe so too. Yep. But there is that option. So we can inform her of that. And how does that affect the tax? In that case, uh, it takes off the house lot. You remove that one acre value. Mm -hmm. And it would re 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 reduce her value here to about $14,000. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. And determine whether it's yes. feasible to build a house there. By the by the conservation commission. Right. Yes, we've always said if they determine that a house can't be built, great, that's it. We take it from there. Yeah, we take it except their um, ruling. Okay, conservation restriction. Very good. So, are you going to just? I'm. Care about it or do we deny? It? I I I would move to deny. Second. Based on the reasons seen in in our visit. Yep. So once we deny it, then. Um, so she's got to move forward with another plan. Yep. Correct. I agree. Second. Right. Terrific. Agreed. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Next, we have Nancy Goldsmith out on Williamsburg Road, who applied based on the fact that she had the detached garage torn down and hauled away in 2020. 
And so we went out to see it and there's, it's gone, it's gone. So I moved to grant uh, abatement on the value of the garage. Is that just the one year or for, for it, back to two years? No, no, just the one year. Just one year. Yeah. I second. Okay, any further questions or discussion? All in favor, yes. Aye. <laughs> Aye. All right. Okay. That one goes for that. Survey. Okay. And then we have our two um, land considerations up on Riley Road. Uh, the first one we looked at was Katie Ruby Churko's land, which was uh, set off last year from the main family, Langham family piece. And it is on the east end, on the north side of Riley Road and goes out to Route 116. Um, I pulled a copy of the survey just so we could see it. And it goes right out, um, the Basilia house is down here. This is that area where you see the old road uh, just before you get to the bridge, the old road goes out into the woods which was before they were built 116. She goes, so she goes, she goes the down there. She only has 30, 55 feet, 35 feet of frontage down there. Yeah. So her frontage is all up here. And from what we saw, I mean, from what I saw, it certainly would be the easiest place to build. Hmm. Yeah. So we went up, we viewed the land. And am I correct in saying that we saw no features that would prevent development or cause unusual costs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think the thing to do here, I would propose that we uh, deny her abatement, but send a letter, including the land schedule, explain it, how it's developed from sales. And um, do it that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, according to our land schedule, what would it come out to just roughly? Oh, um, let's see, 105,000 for 6.08 acres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 105,200. Her opinion of value is $50,000 because the land is undeveloped and unimproved, so the valuation is high. An abutting, abutting undeveloped property was taxed at a lower rate in previous years. I'm not sure if she's referring to the family property or to the Michelson property. Well, the Michelson property is in Chapter 61B, so that is a lower rate. And their own, the family property is, what did I just say, 65 acres. And so, uh, you know, you're getting out to the area where the acres is down to like 4,000. Yeah. Right, put it in 61B. Right. That would lower part of it. It's still the first acre is still yep. going to be in here. But. Right. 61B. Well, very good. They separated it so she could build on it. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good idea, suggesting that and sending her the information on 61B. Yep. So she could qualify for it. So um, move to deny. Second. Okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, denied. Why well, I have to
Let's go over these together, Laurie, tomorrow. Okay. I, I can do any little letters I need to or anything, and we'll put it right with the certificate and have it already in the packet. Yeah. Well, we have essentially the exactly the same situation with the family piece next door. Um, her brother said, having detached good frontage land, one might expect a lower valuation for the rest. Uh, it's valued the entire property with house, two barns and a couple of sheds. It was valued at 348,100. Um, they had taken the six acres off to give for, for Katie. And of course, the valuation on those six acres was at the end of the calculation. So it did not come down very much. And uh, land values went up 8%. So that offset it a bit. So um, explain the land schedule and the values. I should, yeah, went up really. I should do values went up 8% there too. And 61B again? Or he, he'd do well to get 61. If they wanted, they have so much woodland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 61, 61B, well, you know. Yeah. Just send them, send the pamphlet that we right. have that explains all the different right. categories. Yep. But in the meantime, I move to deny. Okay. Fine. Okay. So. I love it that these will be out before the new year. We'll get rid of almost all of our abatement applications. I'll list them all. Okay. I heard the motion. I heard the oh, 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 okay. Did we, did we have, okay, further discussion? No. Shall we vote? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have just one more application for abatement. And I believe this person is uh, in a physical rehab facility at the moment. So, I will have to call and find out when we can have view the property. It's right here in the village. And the what's the abatement for? It says highly overvalued. Oh, okay. It doesn't get specific. It just says highly overvalued. We value the property at 184.4. This is um Gwen Rayfield's house. And their opinion of value is 100,000. Well, uh, we need to go see the house. That's all there is to it. So- yeah, and I, I thought it said that they were supposed to give a, a list of things that, that, that's kind of a general- That's a very that's general, They can, we can ask for further details, yes. But it, that isn't what we asked for. No. Well, that's that's not exactly we told them to apply. It's right. Like we need and that, to make yes. sure we could ask for that. Yep, which we will do. Which we can do. I can ask for the additional information and arrange to set up a, a site visit. Yep. Well, we even with additional information, you're still gonna just do a site visit from the side. Yes. So yep. So we're not gonna deny it. No, we're just that's that's right on the whole. Actually, that there actually is one more, which is for land um down here on Whiteley Road. 
and the owner uh, wants to be with us when we view the land to show it to us. Mm -hmm. So we'll try and pick a good day for that. So it's a question of the value of the land? Yes. Okay. He separated a piece off and sold most of the land and kept a small piece. Mm -hmm. And he feels that it's overvalued, it's, oh. uh, that it's not developable. Oh. He has a little camp on it, but he feels that due to its proximity to uh, Roaring Brook, it would be undevelopable. So I think that may be another CONCOM decision. Okay, possibly. Yeah, okay, because I looked at the plan, the survey, and the way the brook goes and the property line goes, it's darn close to 200 feet all the way up and down, you know, a little bit more maybe. And I don't know if that brook would qualify as a 200 foot boundary or a 100 foot because a lot of the land is high and then drops to the brook. Right. So, so yes. So I don't know which would be required. Right, and that's not a navigable, that's not navigable. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be fun to have toy boats there, or rubber docks. Yeah. 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 Most of the time, that's that. that's for sure. Okay, so is there okay. any other? <laughs> <laughs> Your agenda is two sided. Uh oh. So, <laughs> no, it's not that there's really anything more. Okay. You have to make sure you the payment applications, plan site visits. Because there is public present, we have to make sure there's no change. Okay. Yeah, there was one more thing. That didn't make it on the oh, oh, right, of course. Business. Yeah, you wanted to ask about how I was doing with the um, presentation. Yes. And I have the whole front page almost completed and with lots of. Uh, well, I was hoping you would have it to show us. Show it to you. Really I just made a couple of revisions. Did you look at it? Oh, I teach with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your voice. Yeah. We don't get it. Did your mother have twins? Yeah. Did your father have a children? <laughs> Taking each page apart and looking at one or two sections at a time to make it a little easier to interpret. Uh, there we go, in case anyone wants to see it. This is a dummy property record card that hopefully will enable people to learn how to interpret their own more, more fully. So it starts up here saying that this is the property location. Map and ID is explained out a little bit. Down here, the difference between here and here is that this is the owner's mailing address. And actually I'm putting in a different address. I'm putting in a PO box just to make it different. Um, different codes that aren't clearly explained. Uh, for example, the neighborhood code. What is a neighborhood code? And here it gives you the six different ones that we have and where they are, where they reflect. The class is also something that no one would know automatically. So here are the various classes that are represented there. One might find in that category. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Calculated acres, the price, the sales data, and the uh, basic general information about the area. So then I'm going to next take the land calculation and the summary 
that's done on this part of the page. That'll be a second page of the information and that will be interpreted by itself. Is that the kind of thing you were hoping for? Was I think it's more than what I, I'm expecting. I think, well, um, it seems to answer the questions that you had and uh, that I think people might have. Yeah, this is a property. Those yeah. are in numerical order. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. The most often one most seen, of course, is always the 101 mm -hmm. single family residences, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is great. Mm -hmm. Just this ignore is, this. But this. Yeah, but this, yeah. This is what's important. Right. Well, this okay. is the section that's coming next. I'm working on these two sections. I've already done this one, telling what P and R mean, uh, referring this code here back to there, uh, the method, square feet or acres, the suppressed, I'm explaining that in the class, residential or otherwise, and how these two calculations are made, one for each part of the property and added together and rounded to the figure that shows up over here. Then I'm gonna just- This is on the, on the land part. Right, that's on the land the part. part. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be the next page after this. I'm, I'm yeah. doing this in three sections, then I'll get to the house part. Because to me, that's almost the part that people really need to understand. Well, I wanted to begin at the beginning. <laughs> so when do you think you can have that done? I mean, this was been September and I just wanted to Try to get this done. I agree. Do my best. I'd like to have it done by the end of the year. The end of the year? That's in a week. Ten days. Oh, the end of this year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Holy. Uh, so, oh, so you might. Yeah, I was thinking the beginning of January would be good sometimes mm -hmm. to get that to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You think that's possible? I'd like to aim for that. Yes. Mm hmm. So, do we have anything else? Is that the last thing? That was, yeah. Besides public comments, and we have, we have Nick. Yeah. Hello, Nick. Nick is muted. We don't know if Nick has any comments, but Nick is. So. Do you know who Nick is? No idea, but this happens a lot. People Nick, we're they, open they for public Zoom. comment. You're welcome to join us. Do you have anything to say? They basically just come on to the stuff. Oh. But he's been very well behaved. Oh, so it's you don't think it's just somebody? I have no idea, but he's mm -hmm. responding to his request for public comments. Right. Well, he has not sent any communication to that. Well, Nick, we're getting so ready they to they close the stop? meeting, so come again another time. <laughs> <laughs> Our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, Four. January 4th, 5.15. Mm -hmm. We'll get out on some site visits before that. Around January 1, we have several new houses to look at. And as we saw today, lots of places that we can go. Mm -hmm. So once we can figure out a schedule of when we're available, I'll make calls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Move we adjourn. Move we adjourn at uh, six thirty-eight. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great.